Risa Floor utilizes intuitive floor-by-floor -floor model input to design and optimize building systems constructed of composite and non-composite steel, concrete, masonry, wood, and coal form steel. In this video, we will take a look at the setup and basic modeling tools to create a two-story masonry and steel composite building in Risa Floor. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've already started a new model here with a single floor and some project grids. Now that we have this model already set up, I'm going to use the draw wall tool to draw in my masonry walls. I'm going to set my design rules to typical. And then I'm also going to set my material type to masonry and specifically the concrete from the drop down. Since I want my masonry walls to be my lateral system, I'm going to choose lateral under function and click apply. Now I'll draw in my walls by clicking point to point on my project grid. And you can see in the model view, snap points are highlighted to help me click. And now I've created just a simple box. To set additional wall properties, use the wall design rules spreadsheet. Here you can select the material type to define its design rules. For my masonry wall, I'm going to define the wall thickness to be 8 inches and then partially grounded. Clicking back in our model view, if I double click walls in the model view, this opens the wall panel editor. I want to add a door opening. So I'm going to click on the create opening tool. Then in the elevation view, I'm going to click diagonally two points to create my door opening. And see the program has created a lintel for me. Now going back to my model view, let's draw in our steel framing now by first selecting the draw columns tool. I want to use square two columns, so I'm going to select that from the drop down menu here. And I'll find my square tubes. And next I'm going to set my design rules to be typical. I'm already using masonry walls for my lateral system, so I'm going to choose gravity on the function for these columns. If I had some brace frames or moment frames for my lateral system, then I could use this lateral definition just as we did when drawing in our walls. Now I'm going to click apply and then back in the model view, I'm going to use those same project grids to click and place my columns or I can box and select to add columns across several grids. Now I'm going to draw our floor beams two ways. First, I'm using the draw beams tool. I'm going to draw in gravity composite beams, which I'm going to select my composite selection down here and then my gravity function up here. You can also set the beams and releases. So I'm going to set mine to be pinned, but if you have moment frames, for example, you can define these end releases to be fixed. We can quickly go down here and you can choose if you want to draw these beams point to point or draw them from point to beam. Clicking apply now takes us back to the model view. And I can quickly use the project grid again to then draw in my beams across the grid lines. And then you'll see here, Risa Floor automatically splits the beams across my columns. Now the second method of drawing beams, I'm going to create our infill framing using the Generate Beams and Bays tool. My deck has a max span of 10 feet, so I'm going to do an equal but max spacing of 10 feet here. Again, I am checking my beams to be composite, so I'm going to select that checkbox here again, and then I'll click Apply. And then I'm going to simply click and drag a box over my bays, and that's going to generate my infill beams. And you see here, Risa Floor has generated my auto infill beams using that 10 foot spacing. Let's create our floor diaphragm now. Click the Create Diaphragm Edge tool, and in this window, I'm going to look at the overhang distance. And so here, I'm actually going to change this value to be 3 inches to overhang from my framing. And then I'm going to select the diaphragm type, and I'm going to leave that as rigid. But you can select semi-rigid and flexible in this category also. By choosing the first method, Risa Floor is going to auto-generate the floor slab across all of my beams. And see, if we zoom in here, 
you can see this purple outline shows our diaphragm edge. Resafloor offers modeling tools many of us are already familiar with in today's CAD software, such as Trim and Extend, Move, and Copy. And these are all located in this top toolbar up here. This floor is done, but I want a multi-story building. So I'm actually gonna create a new floor. So in my floor spreadsheet, I'm going to hit enter into the next row. And that's going to open up my new floor and I'm gonna create a roof. So for my roof level, I'm going to enter in the elevation just as you normally would. And I'm just going to also change this to be the roof area load and click apply. So now the program has created my new roof floor. Now if we use that copy tool I talked about earlier, I can select that and there are several options here, but I'm going to copy to another floor. So under the copy to another floor, I'm going to choose my roof floor and I'm going to select the elements I want to copy to this level. And so I'm going to choose just the walls and also the columns and click apply. Now I'm going to navigate to my roof floor and you can see that the program has copied my columns and walls up to this level. Here you can use the same modeling techniques we used on the first floor to draw roof joists, girders, and the deck edge. I'm going to go to our full model view and now you can see our multi-story building so far. At this point, we've completed the modeling of our structure. We could then move on to applying loads, running the analysis, and then reviewing design results. For those topics, as well as information on other topics, please visit our website, risa.com.